Welcome to Resiliency Radio, your go-to podcast for the most cutting-edge insights in functional and integrative medicine. I'm your host, Dr. Jill, and in each episode, we dive deep into the heart of healing and personal transformation. Join us as we connect with renowned experts, thought leaders, and innovators who are at the forefront of medical research and practice, empowering you with knowledge and inspiration and aiding you on your journey to healing. Hey, guys. If you've seen some of these special episodes, today is no different. I am so excited to announce that you can now watch my film, Dr. Patient, at drpatientmovie.com. You can rent it, you can purchase it, you can share it with friends. And today is part of a special series of episodes about the making of the movie. You've seen a few episodes already, and today is a really special episode with Aaron Carnahan, who is, no, he's not my brother. This is my ex-husband who actually worked with me to produce the movie. Uh, Welcome, Aaron. I'm so, so glad to be here talking with you about the movie. I am so excited to be here. I'm so excited to be talking with you, and I'm excited that we're at this point. Finally, where we're able to share the film with other people. So thank you. too. And before (laughs) we jump in, let's watch this clip to set us up for our conversation. We had just gone to Aaron's father's funeral and when he came home about a week later, I remember being excited to see him again and when I opened the door, I didn't even recognize this man that I had been married to for 20 years. His eyes were like hollow and there was no, there was no connection. And he didn't waste much time. He said, Jill, I don't love you anymore. I think my mind couldn't handle how that shattered my bubble of what I thought was true. If I had to describe the feeling, it was kind of like a trust fall with nothing behind you and like a free fall that just keeps going. And the place I tried to go immediately was, maybe I can fix this. Maybe there's something I can do. Ooh. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that's crazy okay man. where do we go from there <laughs> so we just happen to dive right into the heart <laughs> of maybe the one, one of the most poignant and painful moments of the film yeah and so there's a lot here that we have to unpack and I'm I'm just delighted to be here because here you and I are years after the tragedy of our our divorce but also the beautiful transformation that it did in both of our lives and um, we're friends and we just made a movie, <laughs> right? <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> but today, one of the things we really wanted to talk and about. And I appreciate you saying that right now because everybody that just saw that clip's going, that son of a. <laughs> <laughs> right. And it's just genuine. Like, I love you. You love me. We have great respect for one another. Um, but, you know, I want to start with that. Okay. People are out there and they're in breakups. They're just post breakup. They're maybe in a relationship that's not great or they're struggling. This is real life and it's connected to our health and our mental state. And I want to just put that on the table because what happened was this really rupture of a relationship after 20 years of marriage. We had a good marriage, um, but at the end it was it was a, a, a clear rupture. And what happened though, as we look back, was that rupture caused us to get a divorce and go really, really, really deep into our own, your own and my own personal trauma around connection, intimacy, relationships. And what happened was so beautiful because it was painful and hard, but the places we went to allowed us to be the people we are today who are in other relationships, but also have deep respect and admiration for one another and actually can work together in making a film. What's your thoughts on that, Erin? Well, first of all, I think 
That was some of the, the most beautiful things uh, with making a film with you and making a film. We didn't, we didn't set out to make the film, and we said this in the podcast with Daniel, we didn't set out making the film to make a film about Dr. Jill. It was more about functional medicine and the way you do medicine. So it was, but it wasn't. And then the story just turned, and, and like so often happens, a movie just becomes what it wants to be, especially a documentary. It just becomes what it wants to be. And even inside of that, like, man, this was a huge turn, putting all of this in and our story and our relationship into the film and 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 all of that. I guess the the thing that's powerful about it to me is realizing that that work that we did and uh, the trauma that we both worked on independently after we divorced, how it not only affected our emotional state, but in it affects our physical health and how that whole concept of if you want to get well, you have to feel that you are worthy of being well. And that that's just, that's just powerful, powerful stuff. So to me, it's, it was, um, it was an interesting choice to put that in to the film, but I think it was so, so, so right. And the right choice to put into the film because it has a lot to do with healing because healing isn't just physical. It's also emotional, spiritual. And, um, and a lot of times those emotional and spiritual things can be affecting your physical health. So I'm super glad that we put it in. It's hard to watch at times. <laughs> Every time it's super hard to watch, but I know it's right because it's real. It's real life. Yes, me too. Because again, from my perspective, we were going to do this at film on environmental toxicity and mold related illness and complex chronic things because so many patients are suffering. We wanted to bring awareness and patient stories and just a little bit of my story. And then as we got deeper and deeper into it, we realized we have to share at, at a deeper level than we were comfortable with initially. And what happened is the final cut of the movie, you and Dan as director and producer, went to places that I was actually afraid to share. Like some of the scenes in this movie, you're going to see, I call them the ugly cry scenes. <laughs> like I'm just raw and real. And it's so authentic because it wasn't even, none of this is scripted, you guys, like literally me sitting in that chair. And if you can imagine this, Dan and Aaron are the, on the other side of the camera. And I'm sharing about the trauma and tragedy of the divorce. When my husband tells me he didn't love me anymore and he's standing on the other side of the camera. Like the real deal is like, this is happening in real life. And I had to go to a place because I did a first take and Aaron and Dan are like, no, get real. And you like sat down with me. You kind of had like, you like, you're right in front of my face and you're like, Jill, I know I'm here. And I know this is going to be hard for you to say with me in the room, but I need you to be brutally honest and I can take it. You can say anything you want. And you gave me permission, Aaron. I mean, you're behind the camera right there with Daniel. And you gave me permission to share and to share because before I was like, I don't want to hurt you. I don't want to say things that put you down. I want to honor you. And I always have, and I hope I always will, but you gave me permission in the filming to say this hurt. This was devastating. This was so hard. And so what people don't see is the fact you're in the room as we're filming. How did that feel to hear it? Like that night we filmed. It's, it's interesting because once we made the turn and we realized that this was a film, this was your story, I, I knew instinctively that the, what that means is that it can't have any of my perception of what happened, or mm -hmm. it couldn't have any of my perception of what you should have been feeling or anything. And so when I said those words to you, it was coming from a place of, it doesn't matter if what she says hurts. It doesn't matter if what she says, um, I, I don't remember it that way. It doesn't, none of that matters because this is her story. And um, so that, that really helped me to be able to deal with it. Now I will say like, there's times where, you know, my, my nails are probably digging into my, <laughs> to my leg as I'm sitting there or whatever, not out of anger or anything, but just out of, uh, a deep um, regret oh. of of uh, the way I had ended things and things because I I did realize where I was and that I was a shell of myself in that moment and all of that type of stuff. And but the really cool thing is after we would film, it it allowed I probably asked for your forgiveness 
Um, oh, gee. 20 times throughout the filming. And, you, you know, you would just reassure me, but like, it just... Um, we had healing in this filming, didn't there we? There was so much healing. There was so much healing for us. There was so much yeah. healing for us. It was so beautiful. It was so, so beautiful. So I would say... I, I love that you went in those places. It was very difficult, but I knew I had a job to do. And my job was to hear you and hear your voice. And I knew that it would not translate unless you were authentically you, which meant that you were allowed to say what you authentically felt. Yeah. And that's so it. glad you did. I was so proud of you for doing it. I was so yeah. proud of you. Dan and I just looked at each other like, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> there it is. You know. Thank you for allowing that. Because again, most of my life, part of it was like saying what I think people want to hear, or trying to be the person people want me to be. And you have in this filming given you really gave me permission to say the hard things and not filter it through what I think because I don't want to hurt you or anyone else. And I and the truth is, like what you said is. And this is what's relevant to if you're listening out there, you're going through a difficult time in your relationship. We're all broken people. We're all human with trauma that we bring in and we bring in trauma to heal. And if you can think about your relationship as a container for you to transform into the best version of yourself, instead of it being about your happiness, all of a sudden you're going to find amazing things happen because what happens is I believe the divine brings in the people into our life. that are going to poke us at the deepest wounds and it's going to be the most painful. And if you can take those really, and this could be friends, business relationships, and definitely spouses and partners. And in those relationships, if you can know those people that are closest to you are going to probably poke your wounds. And that's actually part of the healing, because if you can take that old wound, that old pattern of living or thinking or being, and take this poking of that wound and start to transform it and act differently, you get to heal and you get to experience things. And again, at the point of the divorce, that was around 2017, um, we were both broken, traumatized little kids. And we got to go to those places after the divorce separately and deal with the healing. And so much happened that we could years later, when we started filming in 2021, um, come back together as friends and truly respectful, like deep friendship and deep admiration. And, and I always... Um, it was hard, but I think through all of it, I saw that there was a brokenness. I knew there was to me and I thought there was to you too. So there wasn't, and I think this is the key of healing and forgiving. When you see the other person as doing the very best that they can, despite their trauma, despite their wounds, and there's this thing called unconditional positive regard. When we extend that grace to someone and say, I know you're doing the best that you can, that's powerful, isn't it, Aaron? Absolutely. Absolutely. And the, uh, the beauty in capturing it, you know, even when we decided to put this in the film, um, you still don't know if it's right. You don't know if the audience will, <laughs> will understand or uh, see the importance of it or whatever it might be. But, and even for me, just so you know, like there were, you even went, um, deeper into some of the stuff with me uh, in the interview that hit the cutting room floor. And I remember telling Daniel, I'm like, Daniel, and I mean, it just <laughs> devastated me because it was like, you were just being real. Mm -hmm. And I said, Dan, just put, let's put it into the film. If you, you know, I'm not worried about me. I'm not worried about what people think of me. Like, let's just get this story right. And he's like, Aaron, he goes, you're just, you know, he made it clear to me, like, you don't have to put in every single wart and thing you don't have to not everything that you did wrong needs to be said it's not important to the story he said and he would he really was a really beautiful check and balance to say you're just saying that because you want to make sure that you know you're taking responsibility for what you did wrong and he goes and I get it but it doesn't it's not needed for the story so you don't have to go into every single detail or whatever and I I loved that so much yeah, it was. And I want to just say to you and Dan's credit, I could not have possibly had a better number one. You knew my story through illness. And we're going to go next to that. Like how a spouse deals with illness. 
yeah. from 19 years old is when we met through all the way through 40. And so you saw this journey in real life and to have someone on the other side of the camera that like literally had been there with me when I'm vomiting from chemo, when I have no hair. And, you know, speaking of that, I'll never forget that time when you looked at me um, after the surgery and I'm all, you know, scarred up and everything. He's like, I don't care. You said, I don't care. You said, I will love you no matter what through this. And I remember that. And so to tell that journey with someone who was there and then Daniel, same thing, like nothing but compassion and kindness. You guys created a space in the filming. And I think you guys will fill this as you watch the film that is so raw and authentic and vulnerable, but you cannot have your actor or your person that's on screen doing that unless it's safe. And you know what you did is you created great safety and you know how we did that? It's unconditional love. It's like creating this space. And I love this definition of love for partners or spouses or filmmakers. It's creating a space for another person to be the optimal transformative version of themselves. Like you create this space for transformation to happen. How was it, or what do you think about you and Dan brought that to the crew, the movie, everybody who was there, even the patients? What was it about how you filmed that brought that vulnerability and authenticity? I think that the key was right from the start with Dan and I's company, even before we turn on a camera, Mm -hmm. is um, we want to be a source of love and light and we want the experience for anyone who is a part of it to be a beautiful experience not necessarily painless because like it's difficult to to relive your past and for some of your patients to relive their past but to uh to to extend love and um to share with them that we want to we want to honor them and everything that they do and so it was with we were able to do it through an intentionality and with the, we were able to do it by being intentional. And um, it's what we want to do just in our daily walk in life and every single thing that we're doing is we just want to love people and honor people and lift them up. And so it's, it was that that was actually easy. I'm glad it translated. You know, you, that's your hope, but you don't know that it that will translate. Well, I remember like literally powwowing with the team on different shoot days and like really sharing with them. Our intent was just to love people, transform lives, inspire. And you could see the crew themselves. Like we had some yeah. incredible experience with everybody we worked with because it was like on the set. I think you and I talked about, we have this idea of this film that now is reality, but when you're filming it, you're still in the pre-stage and you and I and, and Daniel decided it's about the filming today. It's about the transformation today. It's about the experience today. And yes, we want this film, but I think that intentionality around how do we love people today on set? How do we just make a safe space for Burke and Alyssa and for Jamie and for Ryan and everybody who showed up in the film and others um, to really just be themselves and know that they're going to be loved and accepted. And I think you guys did a phenomenal job of creating Thank that space. Thank you for saying that. And you're a part of that as well. You're yeah. Very much a part of and it's, it's interesting. I think people get this when they watch it, but this is not scripted. I mean, we had ideas that we want this, we want to, you ask questions, of course, but everything you see in this film is just literally like, Jill, what do you think of this? And I spout out this, or I start crying about this. Like it's very <laughs> raw and very real. And I hope that the film goer, how did you as a, a filmmaker, um, and even ex-spouse, <laughs> uh, uh, think about that as far as uh, bringing that vulnerability to the screen and like non-scripted. Um, it's actually really difficult. Like Daniel and I are also writers. And so you almost, you want to script it. <laughs> like you want to write it. You're like, oh, that would be amazing. And you just can't do it. You've got to be, the, the key is being in the moment, being present and allowing it to be what it wants to be. And, um, I think for me, that is a very difficult thing to do just normally. <laughs> so it was, it's a process of like really pushing myself to being, being okay with it, not being what might be in my head, you know, especially when it goes back to this is Jill's story or this is Burke's story or this is Jamie's story. And so just allowing it to be and unfold as it's supposed to. And so it just took a lot of practice and a lot of patience to do that. And it's much different than doing a narrative feature because you can't, you can't draw the lines that, you know, you think you've got, you've got boundaries and things are just bouncing inside of those boundaries and it goes in ways that you can't imagine. 
Well, I love what the end product turned out in the sense of it. I think feel like it's, it's actually almost scary, which means we're probably on the right track of how vulnerable yeah. it is. Um, and I think people who have watched, you know, me are like, oh my goodness, I can't believe how much you shared. Um, one thing we just got off the call with some of our marketing team. And one of the comments was there is an earlier version out there and um, it was good. But then we all went back to the drawing board. And I think you and Daniel first said, hey, Jill, we got to go way, way deeper. And you started pulling some scenes and things that were very scary for me to share. And what happened is on this call, just right before this recording, um, she was like, oh my goodness, this version I watched, I was bawling like six times a month <laughs> because it's so much more deep and so much more touches me on that level. So what we realized is we had to go there because that's the humanity of us all, right? What that's was right. the point? Do you remember the point where you and Dan said, this isn't the movie we're going to make. We have to switch and shift. And then the scariness of opening up a film, a tell from a filmmaker perspective, what happened there in that ship? And like, because we were done, we had submitted it, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, I think um, I think instinctively as a filmmaker, you know, like, oh, we did a good job. It's good. But it's not what it could be. You know, it's not, um, it wasn't um, exceptional. And for my standpoint, not, you know, every that's subjective. But yeah. for me, I wanted to be exceptional. I want to make something that I'm proud of. And then I could be like, yeah, I was a part of that. I was a part of creating that. And, um, and I knew instinctively that it, it had to go to greater depths. And I knew instinctively that it might mean that we needed to put stuff about our relationship into it. And that meant I needed to be okay with that and not okay with that, but desire it. Um, and, um, and I think if I remember right, we kind of just had to build it and say, Jill, this is going to scare the hell out of you, but yes. you have to watch this. Like, <laughs> and we were like, there's no way it's going to fly. There's no way it's going to fly. There's no way it's going to fly. I remember that, like just being, knowing it was so much better, but it was like not knowing if, because we had told you from the beginning, we will not release anything that, that harms you, you yeah. know, because yeah. it's released like that. And, uh, so I remember that moment of sharing it with you even, and you being like, oh, this scares the hell out of me, but it's, it's yeah. so right. You know, it's, I knew when I was crying at watching myself cry because like, cause I could feel that girl, like part of the scene, I call it the, the ugly cry scene. Like I see that scene and I'm like, so touched because it's so real and it's so the right. heart and it's so like the, some of the most vulnerable stuff I, I said there and I knew it needed to be there, but it's ugly. <laughs> Yeah, well, but that's my funny, ego right like in the way yeah. and the, the irony is all of those things that we're just worried about what other people think and yeah. what other people people um can only connect with those parts yes they, you know it's hard to connect with dr jill the rock star on the stage which mm -hmm. that is a part of who you are yeah. and you connect with an audience but that's you on stage and and everybody else in the seat where people connect is I've had ugly cries like that. Yeah, yeah. I've been hurt in a relationship like that. I've been sick and no one understands all of that. That's what really relates to people are those, those dark moments. Um, it's just that most people don't share those dark moments with the rest of the world. Yeah. like You just did, but those are the things that, that people can, can really connect with. And that is where the true healing begins. And I think ironically, I think what makes you a fantastic physician, having now sat in your office as you're uh, talking with patients, what makes you a fantastic physician is the fact that you're willing to go into those deep places with people and share and be vulnerable about your own life, even with them in inside of those places. And not always, just when it's yeah, right. Absolutely. But, but I think that's something that because you're able to be vulnerable with them, they're able to share deeper and go deeper with you. And I think that that's pretty, pretty darn amazing. Thank you for that. And I think you're right in the sense of just when we, it's kind of like, there's so many levels, right? You as a filmmaker created this safe space where it was okay to be totally vulnerable. And I knew I could say anything. And of course we can edit it out, but it also, that was safe for me to express my deepest fears, my deepest joys, my deepest sorrows, my deepest hurts in a place. And if I can do that in the patient realm too, where I create a space for them that is full of unaccept unconditional love um, and that um, unconditional positive regard, then that actually actually is a start of healing, right? Like that's, right. 
it was healing for me in the film and it was healing and healing for patients. So it's this reflection of all across. Um, let's shift because one of the themes upon themes here is um, that we were actually surprised. So we did a premiere last year. And as people walked out of the movie, we actually interviewed and, and found out what touched you in the film, what impacted you. And something that we were both really surprised at was there was two or three incidents of spouses that had seen it together where one spouse had been chronically ill with Lyme or mold or some autoimmune or complex chronic illness. And the spouse came out and like with tears in their eyes said, I understand now what my wife or my husband's been going through. And you would not believe I was either ready to leave or divorce, or I was at the point of, of not even understanding and seeing this film allowed me to have deep compassion. Talk about that, Aaron. How did that, like, cause we were shocked, but we also saw, oh, there's another level here of partners understanding the suffering of the one who's ill. Yeah. Well, number one, that I remember that so clearly and, and it's happened in subsequent other interviews uh, with people or conversations, question and answers with people at film festivals or whatever. It's come up a few different times. And first thing it did was it just, uh, it was like this beautiful thing of knowing that, yeah, it was right to put that stuff in the film about our relationship um, because as hard as it was for you, as hard as it was for me, like to think that that could help not only the healing of an individual who's sick with chronic illness, but help the healing of a relationship inside of that person being sick with chronic illness and how that could actually help heal their chronic illness as healing that relationship. Like, are you kidding me? The, the layers you talk about functional medicine being root cause and the depths of that are just ridiculous. And especially when, you know, it is, there is that sense of loss when you, you know, I've considered our, our end of our marriage, like another death to me that I had experienced. Right. And there's that sense of loss. And you're like, all of a sudden you're like, Oh, but out of our loss of our marriage, like, what if we help other people not to lose that? Yeah. And what if we help people to heal through that? And so that was just, it was an, an amazing thing. And so as I think about people who need to see this film, yes, people who are chronically ill, people who maybe do not have answers for why they're sick, and maybe this gives them hope that they can get answers. And maybe it's for physicians who maybe don't know functional medicine or know this way of medicine, and it causes them to look into it. Or maybe physicians who do know functional medicine and know, can think about being a little bit more compassionate and open and all of that. All yes, 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 yes. But to me, this part right here, to think that, that you can help potentially people to heal, whether it be a spouse or a mother or a father or a child, because being the spouse of a chronically ill person, someone dealing with mold, environmental toxicity, Lyme, all of these things, it's hard. Yeah. It's really hard. And so for them to be able to watch this yeah. and, and have more compassion and empathy for their spouse, for their loved one, but at the same time to maybe feel like a little vindicated of like, hell, if they even broke because of this, yes. maybe there's a reason why I'm hurting so bad and feeling so isolated and alone. And so for me to be able to say to other spouses out there, you're not alone. All of us, there's other people that have been there and understand where you're at. And so I, I was blown away by those Q&As and how vulnerable they were because yes. we were vulnerable in the film that in a Q&A and with the movie theater filled with people say, I've been just about to hang it up and get a divorce because I can't, I can't do this anymore. And now I feel like I can do this and I understand better. Like what? I know, right? Like, it wasn't mind blowing. If you're out there right now and you're dealing with this, know that. Yeah. And watch the film and share it with oh. those because uh, I want to tell you, it's interesting. I just recorded an episode. You probably, it's, it's live now with Burke and Alyssa. And one of the things we both shared, Burke shared when he shared it with his mother and father, how they came up to him and were like, they knew him intimately. They knew his suffering, but as watching the film, they were like, 
Burke, I can't believe what you really went through and we're sorry. Mm -hmm. And even though they had no, they were incredible parents. And then I tell the story of in the premiere in Denver, I sat next to my dad (laughs) and I held his hand and I was so afraid because I love him so much. And he's been such an inspiration in my life. So in this telling of the story, I didn't want, I wanted him to feel nothing but honor, but they also see that their daughter suffered, not because of them, but just suffered in illness. He sat there with tears in his eyes and said, I'm so sorry you had to suffer. <laughs> and so those types of things, even in the people like Burke and I, and the filming with our, like, it's amazing the layers of this healing. And so I can't imagine someone who's sitting there with their spouse watching this movie mm-hmm. and the, he look, the spouse looks across and says, sweetheart, I am so sorry. I didn't understand how much you suffered because mm-hmm. the thing about suffering is we were meant to suffer in community. When we have people holding our hands and surrounding us, suffering becomes less painful. We're not meant to suffer alone, but what's happened in the last several years, and it's just escalating, is we have a thousand followers or a million followers, but we have no one to come over and help us make dinner or feed our dog. And we are losing that connection. And so that that idea of connection, in fact, I heard Esther Perel recently call AI artificial intimacy, (laughs) like this idea that we have all these connections, but the truth is the people who are in the suffering with us and holding our hand, it's either there, it's either rare or that we don't have those kind of people. So I think part of that, the film speaks to that loneliness we feel in suffering. Yeah, absolutely. It does. And, um, you know, Jill, this morning I was in, um, in the forest, I was on a hike, uh, like I do in the morning, every morning, it's my time to breathe and think and process and just be. And I was thinking about the fact that we were going to be doing this podcast today. And I felt like this overwhelming need to just be vulnerable. Because I thought, you know, something that we didn't get in the film is me talking about from the the spouse's perspective or whatever, like, I I realized that people might be wondering, like, how in the hell did he not stay with her through that? Like, he, they did cancer together and Crohn's together. And I was right by your side through all of that, through this, through everything. I'm like, how? And that's where this, this really weird, weird world of chronic illness and, and mold and Lyme and these you've got to understand it's a different world. And I had been through so much with you. So if it's okay for me to just share like my heart on this, as I was just trying to process it, what people don't realize is there, there was, there's many layers. And one of the layers is, yes, you grew up in this stoic German background that, you know, you'd suck it up and you, you, you buck up and you go and do it and you do the work and you do the challenge and everything. And, and you did that with mold and you would go to work and you would serve people and you would love people and you would heal them as you yourself are trying to heal yourself and, and take care of yourself. And then you would get home and there'd be nothing left. You worked your ass off and you would say, I'm just, I'm destroyed. I'm wrecked. I can't go skiing. I can't go out to dinner with you. We can't go with friends or whatever else. And, and my mind that was still a child mind was saying, how come you, how come you can do it with other people? But like, how, how come you can go work and do that? And or how can you put on the happy face in front of others at church or whatever else? But yet you have nothing for me. Like, and like you start doubting, are you really sick? And because yeah. you can't even see it in a lot of ways, you can hide it, you know, from people. And so there's all of that doubting. Now, my trauma and my, the stuff that I don't realize is that I was so very codependent and that I didn't communicate those feelings to you well. And so I take ownership and all of that, like I wasn't able to convey to you, I'm hurting here because I feel I don't understand this. I don't understand mold. I don't understand. And we both said that cancer was, was, yeah, cancer is easier than mold, right? Because that's like, cancer is so easy. (laughs) <laughs> super easy yeah. i mean it wasn't right right but well relative. i mean and everybody for crying out loud we're running freaking 10ks with pink ribbons yeah. and everybody understands cancer and yeah. and crohn's everybody knows of crohn's and all of that and like i could stand with you in that and say yeah 
the hell are you talking about, doctor? The the diet doesn't have anything to do with it. And I could stand by you, and I could see that you're wasting away. Yeah. That you've become a half of your person because Crohn's has just devastated you. I can see that. I can be that. I can I can understand that. The world gets it. Mold. No. Especially back then. Yeah. Know anything about mold? Like, and we were both exposed to it? some extent. Uh, and yeah. the big thing is too, like you had gotten Lyme disease filming. And yeah. another film. And so we kind of, I want to give compassion to you too, because you had no idea, but you were also suffering from <laughs> Lyme disease, which affects <laughs> brain and cognition and your immune system towards the end was like crashing. I'm in the really bad mold and recovering from mold. And I'm, I was so in a, like, I've got to survive survival mode. Burke and I just talked about that too, like complete survival mode. So all I could do is like, I got to survive. I can't lose my practice. I got to go to work. I got to do that. And then I collapse at home, right? I have nothing left. <laughs> And what we never learned is I never learned how to ask you for help and say, I really need you to show up in this way. Um, yeah. And you didn't either. Right. So we were two people that kind of had learned to take care of ourselves and we wanted like help from one another and support, but we didn't even know how to ask. We didn't know how to ask. So that if I could say anything to yeah. anyone, it would be communicate your needs. Yes. Both of you. Yes. Communicate your needs. And also if you're the spouse of the person who has this chronic illness, understand that when you communicate your needs, they might not be able to meet them. And it's got to be okay. It's got to be okay. Because believe them when they say they're hurting. Mm -hmm. Believe them when they say they can't move. Believe them when they say they're sick. Believe them when they say, I can't get, get up out of bed. It doesn't mean that it's not hard for you. But listen, it's hard for them too. It's not that they don't want to be with you, yeah. you know, it's not that they don't want to be involved. And that's the, that's the message I want to say is that if you and I had been able to communicate, that would make all of the difference in the world. But both of us were, you know, get it done, take care of ourselves. And, and that, that works until this type of thing happens. It know? works until it doesn't, right? It works until it and doesn't. again, we were both, I think, fairly like in the midst of the when the divorce happened, we were both just coming out of being so sick. And oh, yeah. what I what people don't realize, we don't talk a lot about this in the film. And anyone who suffered understands mold and Lyme and complex chronic autoimmune inflammation, long COVID. They affect the brain and the mood and the ability of us even to connect with other humans. So there's so many levels of this because you can have a level of anxiety or depression or even like isolation because when we're in sick behavior, we tend to, we talked about that. In fact, I was going to try to pull up that quote that um, you had sent me about as a child, often we, we, if we, if we don't feel the support uh, of someone taking care of us, or we're kind of the person in our family that takes care of everybody, then we tend to go to that default when we're suffering. I'm not quoting it right, but you get the idea that when we're suffering as an adult, then we kind of isolate because we've always had to take care of ourselves. Right. And we yeah. came together and we're both that kind of a person. We were independent um, and we took care of ourselves. And it was almost like, we both were like, we had this unspoken agreement. You take care of you. I'll take okay. care of me. We'll That's be partners right. and, and all of that. Right. But I, God forbid I ever ask you for help and God forbid you ever ask me for help, That's right. right? We, we taught yeah. each other that. So then when yeah. the crisis came and we were falling, freaking apart at the seams and we were suffering in inconceivably, we had no language yeah. to tell each other, I actually need you to show up. And this is what I need. We didn't yeah. know how to ask. Yeah. And then we both assumed, oh, they're not here for us, which was all baloney, right? It wasn't yeah. true. But Absolutely. that makes so much sense. And I'm saying it out loud because I know people out there are in those Absolutely. relationships where they're not able to ask for what they need. Yeah. And know this too, like this is, this is a beautiful thing. I'm in my fifties. You can learn, you can grow. And so any of you out there that are about ready to give up or like, whatever, like, you know, you can do it, you can do it. And it's, and it's actually beautiful and it, it'll change your life I, in my relationship with Wendy Ann. We have this beautiful relationship where she knows that I've got Lyme and that sometimes things will flare up or whatever else. And, and I now communicate, I am just, ex I can't, I am exhausted or whatever, you know, in those, those times when it flares back up. And um, she also knows to watch out and she'll know that I'll try to self-isolate and that I'll try to, you know, because I always want to be the positive person. Like, look at me smiling. Look at me pushing through. I'm positive, positive Aaron, you know, 
And but she'll notice that I'll I'll go and I'll stay in my office for longer and longer. And she's like, okay, what's going on? Yeah. But she only knows to do that because I've communicated with her that that's what I'm going to do. If I do this, then you. If do I do this, <laughs> you know, to be up, be on the lookout. So I at one point, Erin, um, had a had a um, document with my partner in the past that said, if I do this here's a b c and they take a response it was like a it was like a google doc of a flow chart of how to and it was actually quite helpful yeah it's huge i mean it sounds silly but yeah. like for people like us who like you said you had a successful career i had a successful career we didn't have time to we never shared those those deep yeah. needs and it felt like we were sharing everything well we were sharing everything that we felt uh, wouldn't upset the apple cart. Right. And, yeah. and, um, so feel, share those deep needs and have compassion on one another. Like just, I, I want, I want the world to hear that so much and share this film with people in your life who may not understand what you're dealing with. And especially if you're somebody out there that you haven't even been diagnosed yet, you just know that you're chronically ill, that something is wrong. Like, yes, get a functional medicine doctor, or, you know, go to Form Health or IFM or A4M or somewhere like that that can set you up with doctors um, or Dr. Jill's resource page at the website uh, for this film. There will be a resource page on there uh, to be able to get links to find doctors. Yes, you can, you can absolutely um, do all of that. But that self-compassion and that ability to communicate your needs, it's got to start there. Yeah. It's got to start there. And in relationship, just maybe share this film with people who are, um, that don't know or don't understand. And yeah. maybe, I just had this thought, um, one of the other feedbacks, feedback pieces that we got from after the film over and over was medical students doctors need to see yes. this film so maybe you share it with your doctor and hopefully they're open-minded enough to actually um you know take what's good and not be offended because our medical system is beautiful in some ways and has could be better in some ways but yeah maybe this is something you actually share with your practitioner or your doctor uh, i think it's i remember in one of the the viewings we had a doctor he's probably in his 60s mm -hmm. and he's like he's watching this film and he goes he stands up and he's like, every doctor should watch this film. Yes. He's like, I would never think that I could do that with a patient. I would never think that I could share that intimately yeah. and, and be that connected to a patient. And I'm like, oh my goodness. Yes, absolutely. Doctors, every it's physician. giving them permission to be human, right? Like that's what, that's right. uh, and it's funny because we're taught, we've talked about this on many podcasts with other doctors, but the um, idea that as physicians, we have to be objective and we have to have kind of that, you know, screen and not show emotion and not share intimately. But the truth is we're all human. And what happens is we actually build trust and authenticity when we are totally ourselves, flawed and all, we don't be perfect, of course. But there's this idea that in medicine, you have to be objective and you can't, you, God forbid you ever cry with a patient. And yeah. that's just not, that's not human. That's not exactly. right. Yeah, um, yeah, I love that. Aaron, as we kind of wrap in the last few minutes, uh, what would you say is the thing you're most proud of in this film? Um, and then what 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 was the hardest thing about it? Two questions. Mm, gosh, that's a, that's such a that's such a difficult one. I'm, I think we might have answered this before. Maybe I've even answered it differently. It's like a couple of um, part. I'm proud of you for being vulnerable and for all of the the people that we interviewed in this film for being vulnerable and open. Um, I'm just so proud of everyone who, because it's hard enough to, to be misunderstood by your physicians. And um, it's hard to be misunderstood from your family. And as you share your, your health journey, and then to just do it on film for the world to see it's brave. And I'm very proud of everyone who is brave and were able to share their journey, their health journey and their struggles um, on camera. And I don't take that lightly. And thank you for each one that did that, yeah. including you, Jill. That was huge. I'm proud of uh, Daniel Grace, my partner. I think he's one of the most brilliant filmmakers in the world. And he's, um, I just love his touch 
of um, how he treats everyone on set, but also he's just got a beautiful mind and I just love it. And he's, he inspires me, even though he's like uh, 75 years younger than I am. Uh, he's an old soul and I love him so much. And I'm proud of that in the film. I'm proud that we listened and allowed the film to be what it wanted to be, even when it was scary, you know, I'm proud of that. Amazing. And Aaron, I'm proud uh, of you. you. Yeah. Well, I was going <laughs> to say, I am proud of you to, to come with this project with such an open heart and open mind. And like I said, people don't really understand what you and I went through, although we're sharing a lot of that, but it was powerful on so many levels for me to be able to really share that story intimately and then to get this final version of the film that's so authentic and intimate and scary, but also be like, it's okay. It's okay to, for me to be flawed and fall apart on screen. And because that's what you, we all, we're all human, right? Just show my humanity. Um, right. And to know that those kinds of things are where we touch people. I'm so proud of you for being on set, showing up how you did, giving me permission to be my full self. And we've always joked because it's it's in the book, right? But I always say I used to dial it down to like a four or five out of 10 because I felt like I was too much or too whatever to anything. And I think a lot of women out there maybe feel that way. And you allowed me to be a full 10 out of 10, even when it felt like it was too much. Um, but it allows that gives the viewer, the patient, um, the spouse, the parent um, permission to be their, their full selves too. So thank you for showing up with such grace and kindness and love and compassion and allowing everybody on the set to shine. You really did. You really, truly. Thank you so much, Pazana. So that, that's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. What an um, amazing opportunity for us to share. Um, is there any last bits of advice or, you know, let's share. This is a great opportunity through all of this. Something else really amazing came out and that is Iris Arts Institute. Why don't you share just a little bit about what you and Dan are working on and uh, what the future, um, how this film may catalyze thousands of other filmmakers and inspire. Yeah. Well, it, it's really cool because Daniel and I love the filmmaking world and and making uh, movies. And a part of the process, we we're submitted to a couple of film festivals and got in a few film festivals. And um, there's things about it that we liked, and there's a lot of things that we didn't like. And um, we just said, well, what if we made our own film festival? And uh, especially because we just did this film around health and wellness, we didn't see any film festivals that really dealt with these topics specifically where they were just honed in on health and wellness. And so we're like, what if we did a film festival around health and wellness and uh, about not only physical, but emotional and spiritual and um, trauma and um, environmental health and all of these things and just created it. And so we just decided we'll, we'll just start a nonprofit and we'll do a, uh, a film festival. So this October, we'll be doing the Iris Global Health Film Festival in Boulder, Colorado. And then we hope that Iris Arts Institute will do other things for the arts and help filmmakers get their films made and maybe other film festivals as well. But what we truly want to do is just bring love and hope into the world. And that's what we want to do. And film and our film is an example of this. Film is a powerful way and a powerful medium to move people to move people. And so Hopefully Iris Film Festival will do that and be that for other filmmakers and more importantly, even for other viewers to watch those films and to be impacted. Like hopefully people are impacted by our film most definitely. So that's what Iris Arts Amazing. Institute Amazing. And it's irisartsinstitute.com if people want to share or donate to the I call. think it's dot org though. Yeah. Org. Okay, thank you. So Iris <laughs> Institute. Um, I'm going to make sure. Iris Arts Institute. Yep. .org. Okay. Beautiful. Thank you so much. For yeah, yeah, most definitely. And, and another thing on the, on the, just with regard to what this could be for people is uh, you and I, I'm just seeing both of us on the screen right now. And um, uh, just, I don't know. I just feel like the need to say this divorce doesn't have to be the end of your life. And it doesn't have to be the end of your relationship with the person that you're divorced to. It can be, and maybe it's supposed to be but it doesn't necessarily have to be yeah. and just uh, have compassion and uh, try to not 
try to think in the other person's shoes and instead of your your own and um love is a beautiful thing and it doesn't have to always look the same exact way you can still love your your ex-spouse and um, if you choose to it's not mandatory by any means but um it's this is a strange thing that we have and it's a beautiful thing that we have and uh i'm just grateful for it so if we can be hope to anybody out there um please know that this isn't just an aaron and jill thing this could be you if yeah. you want it to be and use it and it could only be to this place because jill and i went to the very difficult places of dealing with our own trauma and i want that i want to say it over and over and over again in order for us to have this relationship that we have today we had to deal with our own stuff yeah because and we should take ownership right it was there was no finger right. pointing that the, the no way finger. we got here was pointing the finger here that's right that's right we was could only look in this <laughs> right yeah. that's exactly right yeah. so i'm so oh. sorry but i really felt like the need no to that is the that is the exact <laughs> thing that we need to end on it's absolutely yeah. perfect and perfectly said aaron thank you for bringing your heart and your compassion and your insight into this interview and everything that you do um so if you want to see the film drpatientmovie.com. You can rent, you can purchase, you can uh, share it with your friends. We hope that this will impact millions of lives. Yeah, most definitely. And get Jill's book too. The book goes into detail in some places. The movie doesn't and the movie gets in detail. Some places the book doesn't. It's amazing. Read her book as well. It's so fantastic. Thank you so much, Aaron. Alrighty.